Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe. People have been living here in Africa longer than anywhere else in the world. Yet so often, their history has been completely overlooked or written by outsiders. Join me for a groundbreaking TV series, The History of Africa, told by Africans themselves. Over the next two months, I shall be taking you on a journey with me, one which I hope you will find enjoyable, informative, and at times even surprising. I'm just looking at this lady's hands with the henna and the beautiful gold. Two things that we had, of course, in the Kushite kingdom the gold and then of course the henna. The women of Kush dipped their hands in henna, decorated it, and they also wore coal on their eyes, like this lady here. <laughs> Keep my arms straight, he's telling me, slightly at an angle, and away I go. Oh, that's not going to get me very far, is it? <laughs> so can I have a piece of sugar cane? Yes. Mood is getting me some. Oh my please, god. Please, please. He's attacking Shwekida. me with the sugar Shwekida. cane. <laughs> Egypt was just a great moment of African history. So he's making this kind of hollow sound. And he's saying that underneath here, there are believed to be some more archaeological remains that need to be excavated. Looks like you're doing a... Hey! It's a bit like a dance. Ahlan wa sahlan. Izayik ahlan. Shukran. Fa... Dabi... Mungkin ta'amil fini ma'aruf. Kev balbasu. I've just asked him to put this uh, thing around me. I'm going to be a Berber for a minute, so... Oh, I've disappeared. <laughs> Watch my hair, mister. <laughs> it's actually quite tight. It's quite tight. Of course, iron was very useful for fashioning weapons for defence and attack. Right. Particularly so... spears. Those who already had possessed iron technology were winning the wars using spears. <laughs> so um, this is an interesting duo. Are, are they pilgrims? They are pilgrims, and uh, even he's a pilgrim and a hermit as well. He always walks. Sometimes people give him a lift, but he mainly walks with bare feet. With bare feet, no shoes at all. Really? Because he's hermit. Hey. Oh, better! <laughs> Woo! High five! Quite, quite you better. don't know high five? Yeah, like we've got. I will be travelling across the continent, north, south, east, and west, bringing you a history of the African people starting from the beginning of humankind through Africa's great early civilizations to the arrival of the major religions and their impact on the continent. We learn about citizens' connections with the past and how African scholars and experts are seizing control of their own history. I'll tell you one critical problem with this world. There are people who think we can understand this world through the eyes of one culture. I don't believe that one. This world is too complex to be understood, interpreted by one culture. But what has happened is there are cultures that think they are superior to others. And their view of this world is the view. This has been the problem. So science... Which culture are you talking about there? It's Western but... culture, obviously. The Eurocentric groups, they always thought of um, karma as um, younger than Egypt and always copying Egypt but they didn't give um, karma the credit it deserves because karma was a very advanced 
state and its civilization predated Babylon, Rome, and Greece. Uh, I Burmese and Neolithic, and then uh, we discover uh, Berber and Imazirin in Morocco. I can tell you, for example, that about 4,000, and it's already perhaps Berber. The views expressed in this history series are based on the fundamental principle of a unique project started back in the 1960s. By then, most African countries had become independent, and some of the continent's new leaders decided that it was time for Africans to reclaim their past and write their own history. There was a belief that Africans' history had been denigrated and dominated by Western scholars. So, at the leader's request, a group of mainly African academics was set up by UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, to put together Africa's history written from an African perspective. One of the people instrumental in this ambitious project was Senegalese statesman Mokhtar Mbo. The first African to lead a major UN agency, he was Director General of UNESCO for 13 years. He says the resulting volumes, known as the GHA, the General History of Africa, was his most important accomplishment. Durant la colonisation, nous étions considérés comme des êtres inférieurs. J'avais même un maître à l'école française qui nous disait, je répète, vous êtes des nègres, vous resterez toujours des nègres. Il ajoutait à blanchir la tête d'un nègre, on perd sa lessive. On leur a appris dans leur jeunesse que nous étions des êtres inférieurs et que nous resterions des êtres inférieurs. Voilà le, le, le problème. Nous étions des sauvages, nous resterions sauvages. Nos parents l'étaient, nous le serions indéfiniment et que nous serions colonisés indéfiniment. Voilà ce qui nous pousse, nous, maintenant, à dire que nous voulons connaître notre vraie histoire. Nous voulons que les Africains reprennent leur mémoire. Et nous nous apercevons que cette mémoire est totalement différente de ce qu'on nous apprenait, nous, à l'école, et de ce qu'on apprenait aux jeunes Français, aux jeunes Anglais, aux jeunes Américains de notre histoire. The GHA provides an alternative narrative. It's a chronological account of Africa's history from the origins of humankind to the modern era. So far, eight volumes have been completed. The GHA coordinator at UNESCO, the Djibouti academic Dr. Ali Moussa EA, recalls how controversial the decision to start the project was amongst some international academics. How much opposition was there from the traditional Western historians to Africans themselves writing their own history. There, there was a huge conflict, as you can imagine, where it was not easy to change their perspective on African history. But there, there was a very strong intellectual and scientific confrontation between, on one side, the African historian, and the other side, the Africanists. And UNESCO uh, succeeded and managed to, to mobilize around 350 historian experts, other specialists, to really rewrite and to, and to change the, the perspective on, on, on African history. The UNESCO panel of academics set out deliberately to be more open-minded about the variety of sources they use for their research, and they were determined that a lack of written records need not prevent a better understanding of African history. The first point of opposition and uh, conflict was to say, what well, Africa have not the written uh, archives, so we can't really talk about uh, an African perspective of history. And the African scholars said, no, we can also make history with other sources. Art and dance were considered worthy of academic study. the advantage of understanding culture, understanding science, and I'm grateful that I did science. So when I look at a dance, I understand it better. And I have argued that you are not going to understand the African phenomena if you don't understand science. Because our dances, 
The whole culture is inspired by the cosmos, and the cosmos are characterized by rhythm, seasonality, periodicity. That's what characterizes our culture. So there are many layers when you look at uh, a music, at a performance. The history is, is a people's culture, it's a people's heritage, their values, it's everything. And the oral tradition of storytelling, which has endured throughout the centuries, is an important way of documenting Africa's history. We we'll tell stories about animals and people, the purpose being that we want them to be entertained, we want them to learn their history, and we want to, to teach them morals, good morals. Were they just stories or was there also poetry or songs? Usually, when you tell a story, there is a song, like... Sas pegana untele chawavutwa minangasila Linguistics, geography, the fast-developing techniques of archaeology and the paleosciences are amongst the subjects that can tell us a lot about past African communities. There were also written records which had been overlooked by Western historians, for instance, documents in Arabic, Persian and Hindi. And people of African descent living outside of Africa, the diaspora, also contributed information that was valuable in putting together Africa's history. African-American academic Sheila Walker is one of the editors of the General History of Africa volumes. Well, unfortunately, diaspora Africans every place are pretty much uninformed about their history. There are no educational processes that any place that teach diaspora history in any kind of systematic way, uh, and so they don't know. On the contrary, in so many cases, the fact that the diaspora has a history has been denied. I, from the United States, I officially learned that we, US African Americans, had no culture, no history to be proud of. Um, that we had no links with Africa because, of course, back in the day, Africa was considered savage, it had no history, it had no culture. Most African descendants are concentrated in the Americas. Brazil is the second African country on the planet after Nigeria. Hmm? So we are the second, we in the United States are the second African diasporan population, and then I think it's Colombia. So we have Portuguese-speaking, English-speaking, and then Spanish-speaking. After that, it's probably Haiti. Increasingly, we see today that young people across Africa are demanding better teaching of their history. Many black students in South Africa have launched a movement to decolonize higher education. These students at the University of Cape Town want to move away from a syllabus which they believe is still rooted in colonial thinking. I feel like uh, the history that we taught in, in, in South Africa, like the course itself, most of the course that we got taught, uh, it's more Eurocentric, so we don't really get taught about uh, things that happened in the past, like uh, African ancestry, like African religion. We get taught about uh, like our history is on based on Christianity, you know, and Christianity is not African religion. So most of the concepts that we, we taught in our history are mostly based on uh, European things. So now what happens, like the textbook that, the textbook that we study even, they're not written by African scholars. They're written by British scholars or like American scholars. So also that has an influence on what we learn. Like so the stuff that we do learn is very much from a European perspective. So it's very untrue and very warped. People need to hear our voices because I think we're really too silent. We just accept everything. I do think like the African history must be changed. The way we are taught history at high school, it must include like the, the African people, like more of our own people so that you can relate more. I'm from Kenya and just like any other country with a short history of our country from primary school all the way to high school. I wish it would have been more pre-colonial history uh, taught like in more detail more than the post-colonial history. Je pense que l'histoire du monde doit être connue par le monde. Le, ce que nous vivons aujourd'hui est la conséquence la plupart du temps de ce qui s'était passé hier. 
This series, The History of Africa with me, Zainab Badawi, aims to bring you a new perspective on Africa's history, interpreted and explained by Africans themselves.